David Rowcastle, a gifted Arsenal midfielder, faced hundreds of battles with his defenders on the field and won most of them, but his biggest battle was fought off the field with a deadly disease that took away one of the greatest midfielders in football history. Born on the 2nd of May 1967 in Lewisham, Rowcastle wasn't born in the noblest family of all. His parents were Caribbean immigrants who moved to London during the 1950s. And when things couldn't get any sadder, David lost his father from pneumonia at just the age of 29, when he himself was merely five years old. Amidst this tragedy, soccer came to him as a way of joy, something that made him happy, that gave him content. Whenever he felt down or was alone with no one to share his feelings with, he would grab a football and start practicing. And from the streets of his hometown, soccer became the dream of David Rowcastle. In 1982, Rowcastle joined Arsenal's academy under Terry Neal after being rejected by Millwall previously. For the next two years, he trained himself with utmost determination and focus to finally get a professional contract by Don Howe. But the challenges that life had prepared for him weren't over. During the practice sessions at Arsenal, the coaches noticed that Rowcastle had a problem with his eyesight. Quoting an incident about his eyesight issue, his teammate Martin Keown said, they couldn't work out why Rowcastle was running around dribbling with his head down, so they took him to the halfway line and said, can you see the goal? And he couldn't. His eyesight was terrible. They sorted him out with contact lenses and his career took off. Once his eyesight issue was solved, David seemed to be unstoppable for the defenders. 1985 was the year when he made his debut in professional soccer against the team of Newcastle United during the 1985-86 season. Although he managed to score only one goal in that season, his midfield and playmaking skills got him a fixed spot in the regular playing 11. In the 1986-87 League Cup semi-final replay, Rowcastle scored the winning goal against Tottenham Hotspur. David played really well during this season and helped Arsenal win crucial matches like the Cup finale against Liverpool by scoring the decisive goal. He was also rewarded with a League Cup winner's medal as well just before his 20th birthday, Rowcastle's first league championship with Arsenal came in the 1988-89 season, which was one of the best seasons for him in terms of popularity and fame. His solo strike against Middlesbrough and the 30-yard lob against Aston Villa was the talk of the season. Everyone loved the way he moved the ball smoothly along the ground and made crucial plays for his team. But suddenly, when he seemed to be touching the skies with his plays, a serious knee injury occurred, making him leave soccer for the next few weeks. After getting an exploratory surgery, he came back before the end of the season, but it seemed as if he wasn't himself. Even in the next season, Rowcastle stayed away from the field for a long time, all thanks to his involvement in the historic brawl against Manchester United in 1990. He also broke his toe in the first game against Derby County and had to get another surgery done. This constant absence from the field impacted his athleticism and made the fans worried about if he'd be fit again. Amidst all these injuries and rumours, Rowcastle was signed by Leeds United in a way that the people called doltish, cold and woeful. For Leeds United, Rowcastle was their most expensive up to that point. However, he would only play 34 games for the club in half of which he wasn't in the starting exit. After Leeds United, Rowcastle arrived at Manchester City as a replacement for David White and made an instant connection with City fans. Despite suffering multiple injuries at just the age of 26, Rowcastle made sure he was up for the game whenever his team needed him the most. But again, he wouldn't enjoy a very successful season with the team. Rowcastle's second last transfer was with Chelsea, whose manager said that Rowcastle's 60 minutes on the field were more valuable than 90 minutes of other midfielders on the field. Proving his worth, Rowcastle played some magnificent games for Chelsea including the memorable match against Club Brugge KV that sent Chelsea through the final four. But soon, the injuries returned in 1995 and David had to leave football for the next three years until he joined the club of Saba FA. David married his childhood love Janet and enjoyed a strong married life with their three kids, a son Ryan and two daughters, Melissa and Monique. Although David kept most of his married life private, as a gentleman should, 
we get a hint of how his personal life would have been from multiple incidents in his life. For instance, when David went through a long absence from his favourite sport, it was his family that stood with him and gave him strength to come back stronger, which he later did. In the upcoming years, when David would have to face the biggest opponent of his life, it would be his family holding his hands and telling him that he could make it. Despite his demanding football career, David would find time for his family and share the important moments of his life with them. His priority was his family, to which he was fully committed. He and his wife Janet shared a very strong bond and supported each other through life's ups and downs. As a father, David was a role model for his children, teaching them the value of hard work, commitment and discipline. He loved spending time with his kids, often playing games that strengthened their bond. His children were the source of joy in his life, and he enjoyed every bit of success they would achieve. After his retirement from soccer in 1999, Rowcastle got to spend more time with his family. Sounds almost perfect, right? But whenever it seems like everything's going as you want it to, know that a challenge is upon you. And for this amazing Arsenal midfielder, this life-threatening challenge would be non-Hodgkin's lymphoma cancer. Cancer is still considered one of the most fatal diseases one can have. It doesn't bring a sudden death, but a long journey of struggle, unbearable pain, and too much physical and mental fatigue. And David's journey wasn't any different. Rocastle announced that he had been suffering from non-Hodgkin's lymphoma cancer, which is a very aggressive form of cancer that attacks the immune system severely, and had undergone multiple courses of chemotherapy with the hope of survival. Despite a life-threatening knocking on his door, Rocastle stayed strong with his family and didn't give up easily. During the toughest phase of his life, David received the support of his wife, kids and his fans from the soccer industry who weren't ready to let their champ go so easily. However, fate can't be changed. Sadly, David lost the biggest battle of his life against cancer on the 31st of March 2001 at just the age of 33. He left behind a legacy that would inspire hundreds of people to never stop chasing their dreams and chase what they loved the most. David's loss wasn't only mourned by the clubs he had been in, but by the fans from all around the world who understood the impact he made in the games. The news of Rocastle's death shocked everyone, and tributes were received from teammates, fans and rivals alike. Years later after his death, Arsenal paid tribute to one of their greatest midfielders in different ways. One way was the founding of the David Rowcastle Trust, which was established to help young players who aspired to be the next legends. Arsenal also opened an indoor centre in Rowcastle's name to honour him. Apart from this, on 30th of March 2013, Arsenal played a match to mark the 12-year anniversary of David's death. During the first 10 minutes of the game, the fans chanted his name inside the stadium and his famous quote, remember who you are, what you are and who you represent was also shown on the screens. No matter which team, which fans and which stadium it was, the game remembered David Rocastle and his contributions. He wasn't just a player who made good scoring chances for his teammates, he was a man of firm determination and commitment who rose from the streets of Lewisham with an eyesight issue to be one of the greatest midfielders of his generation. Even though David Rocastle is not among us now, he continues to inspire us with his story. He teaches us that even when things aren't in our control and everything seems dark, one must keep walking toward the light. This is a very precious lesson, not just for people who are struggling with the disease, but for everyone who finds their life to be difficult. With this video of David Rocastle's brave struggle with cancer, let us not mourn for him. Instead, celebrate the life he had lived and the good deeds he had done. Today, let us learn from him the resilience to come back stronger and the responsibility to look after our loved ones the way he did to his family. Let us remember him by spreading awareness about cancer and supporting everyone in need. He may not be with us today, but his spirit is still alive among us. Make sure to hit the subscribe button to stay updated on more inspiring stories like David Rocastle's. Thank you for joining us on this journey. See you next time.